<laughs> All right, we're live, and uh, it's Spooky Saturday with Chubbs. So, uh, do you want me to start it off, or do you want to start off with something? Talk no, you go legends. ahead. We're talking about urban legends tonight. I kind of want to start off with something very popular, um, and, and something I think is really spooky and creepy. Um, the 1990s uh, Black Eyed Children, that's when people started seeing them in the late 90s, I think. But there was something that happened in the 50s. Like, there was an occurrence or something. I heard of, like, one time somebody saw them back in the 50s. But that became kind of a thing in the late 90s. And people said that they would see these black eyed kids and they would, you know, when they approach you, they want something from you. They'll be like, hey, can I use your phone? And can I get in your car? Can I get in your house? And they'll keep repeating themselves until you, you know, if you give in or whatever. But if you don't give in, they get angry. Like, let me, let me in. Let me. Yeah, it and started like uh, people would see him on the side of the road, want to help because it was a kid. And then just it started getting to like they were literally knocking on doors, asking to use the phone, and almost like a vampire, like just trying to get let in. So nobody wanted to refuse a kid, but then all the reports would come back like, but they had just black eyes, and that all the stories like couldn't. There was no way they connected. Like the people didn't know each other, so it was really spooky that these stories just popped up all over the place. Oh, definitely. Um, also, how, like, they people are saying that it seems like they could read their mind and their thoughts and stuff. Like, yeah. You'd be like, man, how do I get rid of this kid or something? They'd be like, I'm not going to leave. Or they would, like, respond or something. Um, and the, people said it felt like a demonic kind of presence. Like, they don't know exactly what they are, but it felt like just, like, evil. Like, just pure evil in front of them. Yeah, there was... Well, almost all the reports were that they were all pale, some even having white hair, and, like, never, they all spoke the same in a monotone voice, so, like, the boys and girls both sounded the same, so that in itself would freak me out, like, yeah, just to hear. <laughs> it's almost like some creature trying to, impro like, impersonate a child or something, just kind of creepy. Yeah, and to, because they know, like, most humans will help a child in need, so. But it's almost like they are, like, demons or something. They can't like, fully look human or something. Like, something's off about them. It's the eyes. Because sometimes, you know, people will say the hands and feet or something look kind of evil or something. If it's... So, yeah, yeah there's, there's something really sinister about them. Like, they just... There was, like, a... A uh, man, he was like scared of like uh one that looked like a little girl and stuff, and he was like, "I had my baseball bat and I was ready to like beat it." So it's like they're not—they obviously aren't children. I don't think right. they are. Like no, and then no. Oh, a lot of people said they have a really strong smell to them too. Yeah, like they smell like death or so, like just something rotting. And then people said after they would see them, they noticed their clothes; they couldn't get the smell out. People were uh, getting sick. A lot of weird stuff happened to them afterwards. After mm -hmm. they saw all these things, like bad luck. So yeah, they they seem like a curse of some sort. Like they just they basically curse their life. Or something like it's not yeah, good. There's, there's no like rhyme or reason to the people that see them. Like it's not all in one state. It's not day or night. It could be at any time. So. There's no connection, so that's that's that to me is spooky because you can't predict it, you can't prepare for it, and you know anybody will you know you see a little kid on the side of the road or in need, that's how they get you. So don't answer the door, don't pull over, which you shouldn't anyway. But you know, it's so random. It's really random, though. It's like you know. Um, how do you prepare for something like that? I don't even know what I would do. <laughs> um, me and my husband, we actually saw, saw, like, I think it was like a ghost or something. We encountered what looked like a little child that was in the fetal position outside of a church one night, just like this. And we're like, mm -hmm. oh no, like, they're like, you know, we were going to go help them. They disappeared right before our eyes. Oh, it was the, it was the creepiest thing. We both saw it. So it's like, you can't just be like, oh, that was in my head. It's like, dang it, we both saw it, so now I can't pretend like that didn't happen. Uh, 
Because sometimes, like, I'll do that if I see something, like, you know, it, oh, I'm the only one that saw it, so it was just, you know, my, my mind playing tricks on me. So that time I couldn't really get away with it. But, yeah, like, there's, I feel like there's something dark out there. Well, I kind of, I probably, I think it's demonic or something, but they imitate children and stuff. Yeah, like, to be so coordinated and to have this, like, I don't say script, but to, to be the same thing over and over again for people that can't know, what the, like, no connection, like, there's really something there. And it's something you can't even look into because nobody knows when or where. Yeah. And they also just disappear, no evidence, there's no way. So it's basically you, people have to, you know, believe you or they don't. But it's like, you know, people have seen them seem traumatized or something. So And we don't, we don't know what happens if what they do to people because there's no ending to the stories ever. People either got away from them or if they got to them, there's no story to say, oh, this is what they do. So that's even scarier to me. It's like, uh-oh, we don't even know what's going on. Yeah, exactly, because, like, the only people that have, like, said, like, they're survivors, you know, and they said, that, oh, they disappeared, but it's like, yeah, if they got on people's house, we don't know, like, you know, it could have looked like they died naturally or something horrible, and nobody would ever know. It yeah. reminds me of that, uh, that movie, have you ever seen that movie, Case 39? It was... I don't know, I don't think so. It was a movie that... familiar. It had a... Renee Zellweger, she worked for the DHS and there was these parents and they had this evil kid, but she seemed so sweet and it seemed like the parents were evil because they were trying to kill the kid because this kid was just the devil. And like she's like, you guys are like the worst parents and stuff. And she took the kid in and then the girl was like a demon or something, like an actual demon and she morphed into this ugly creature and she was making that woman's life horrible and there's no way to you know, it was like a curse that she put on her so she couldn't get her, like away from her. Um, it almost reminds me of something like maybe that maybe it's like, you know, inspired by it or something. Just like sinister children, you know. Yeah. I'll have to check that out. I'll put that on the list. Yeah, you should. It was actually pretty good. I, I kinda was like, This is probably gonna be dumb, but I was like, This is good. I kinda like it. Um But yeah, like do you got anything else to say about the the little creeps? No, just for everybody to be weary of children you ever see, hear, or knocking at your door. Yeah, if they have black eyes, don't answer the door. Yeah. That was, that's like the first giveaway. Um, so, uh, what do you want to talk about now? Like, what, what other urban legends you got on mine? Well, to go along with that, um... I will call them phantoms, but we could talk about the shadow people. Oh, okay. Yeah, shadow people. Many, oh. millions of reports throughout many years that I've come across doing research in that for other things, but different things for different people. I think you brought it up next week, last week, where a lot of people, it's in their room while they're in the bed, like in front of the bed or in the corner. And then, for, like, for me, it was I was sitting down and it, it was like people were coming, f like, from one room to the other, but nobody was in the house. So, but there's never a, sh like, it's a shape of a person. So they call them shadow people, but no features. At least most of the cases, there are some where, like, eyes appeared or, but that's about it. So... I I find that extremely scary, as if something has just come across from a, another dimension, if you will. Yeah, that the shadow people are very spooky. Like I was telling you about how I had like sleep paralysis a couple of days ago. Um, okay, I was like sleeping, and there was like a a shadow thing, you know, sitting on top of me. It was just sitting there, and I was like, "What do you want? Get away!" Or something, you know? It's like, "Go away." And um, it wouldn't go away, and it just it kept going on for several minutes, it felt like. And I was praying, and it wasn't, like, really helping, and I felt, you know, it just felt like it had this hold of me. So uh, after I woke up, I was kind of out of breath. I was a little bit like, dang it, I haven't had that happen in a long time. That was horrible. And then my son was like, oh, there was, like, a, ch uh, 
I didn't tell my son what happened. He's like, there was like a chalk outline of a man sitting on top of you when you're sleeping. I was like, what? And then mm. I got really upset. I was like, okay, right, we're getting the Bibles. We're going to pray for a while. Like, I'm not going to have that in my house. It freaked me out when the cat was scared, I guess. My son's like, the cat was freaking out. Animals can sense it because yeah, they I've... see, they're, like kids, they have the innocence factor, and that's how kids see ghosts and or anything paranormal that we don't, and animals too, or can sense evil, if you will. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like children, like when I was a kid, I felt like I saw that stuff way more, like all the time. Yeah, you when know, you I... get older, you realize, like, oh, what was that? So. Yeah, it's like even though I do believe, I obviously believe in the supernatural because I'm a Christian. But like, I I always feel like there's like, oh, maybe I'm just like a little bit crazy, or <laughs> like because it's like I. I don't know. It bothers me. I don't want to see that kind of stuff. And then whenever people say, like, oh, I saw it too, or, like, whatever, then it's like, oh, great. And now it's, like, it's a real thing. <laughs> and, like, I have to deal with this. Um, but, yeah, like, my son, he's even he's seen stuff too. The animals act weird sometimes. I mean, that's the, there's something to it, obviously. Well, when my, my oldest son was uh, maybe five, he was uh, sitting in his bed, and I was reading him a story, and he was just staring into the top corner of the room. And I said, hey, buddy, what you looking at? And he goes, I'm, I'm looking at Max. And I said, well, who's Max? He goes, oh, the guy who lives in our house with us. And I'm like, oh, okay. So <laughs> I had him sleep in our bed that night. And, like, every once in a while, you just see him staring at something, but he named it. And that really – I still get goosebumps because – that's that's going beyond like somebody just saw something like he named it so yeah because why would a little kid a little kid's not just gonna randomly say that you know right like my my son he kind of freaked out one time we were in a catholic church hanging his head off he's like snake man is here snake man is here and i was like what are you talking about and my brother he's like a, he's like a super atheist so he was getting upset like he was like uh, i'm starting to get scared <laughs> My son's like, the snake man is here. Like, we well, gotta leave. Mm. Um, that was just like a horrible. One. I was like, I want to get out of here too. I don't want to be here with a snake man. That's no. <laughs> Jesus. But Catholic Church is kind of they're spooky a little bit to me. They have a different feel to them, or something. Like, I feel like almost like sometimes churches can be the most haunted of places. They really can. Yeah. Be the, they have the most spiritual, like weird forces or something. Yeah, especially the Catholic Church. Uh, that's where I'm at in the Catholic South and went to Catholic school. And I was amazed finding out later on that in many churches, like, they could play music and people could dance. And, and this, where anybody's ever been to a Catholic church or seen it on the movies, you can't talk. You, you got to, it's very quiet very somber and like we had stained glass windows in our church, but they really pick picture everything really detailed, really gruesome, you know, like mm. the crucifixion. And it's like, okay, <laughs> so that's <laughs> right. It's very haunting. And they very, it's almost like a museum where it's cold. You can't touch anything. And like, so yeah, like if you can't, interact with anybody like it it can get to you and it is many down here especially we have very old churches here in new orleans very scary they have haunted tours through the city and a lot of churches in there so i can see why that would be spooky for anybody yeah like i feel like catholic churches are kind of like the worst though because i don't like seeing a bunch of dead jesus everywhere really it kind of like creeps me out. It's like, okay, like that's how you want to picture him. Like, you know, like, <laughs> it's, it's creepy. And I, I don't like, I don't like some of that art and stuff. I'm not really, I don't like imagery, I guess, in church. It's like, just keep it plain and simple. And, you know, it's, it's about the people, not the building, you know. Right. 
And but some of that stuff can like the the structure of the building can have like a beautifulness to them though. But then some of the art it really is spooky. It feels, you know, evil. Like uh, when I was younger, I've always been like creeped out by nuns and stuff because of <laughs> when I was younger. I was in a hospital one night and we were in the waiting room, and I saw like it looked like a nun, and she was like kind of. It almost was like she's floating by, but I know she didn't have feet, and that mm. just, that bothered me for a long time. I saw that when I was a child, and I just never got over. It. I'm like, man, nuns just—they're creepy, dude. Like, they creep me out. I had uh, nuns and brothers—they call them the priest brothers—but for teachers throughout Catholic school, and literally, like you see in movies where the nun will hit somebody with a ruler. I literally had that. We got hit with rulers on our hands, and they mm-hmm. wore they wore the habits and everything. So, and it's just more. The point is to me, it's more. It is scary when they're right in your face. So, sorry, yeah, that, all the time. Yeah, that's. I don't like all that. Um, you know, my my son's school and stuff. They were asking if they give him spank, and I'm like, you can't touch my kid. You know, like I don't believe in that kind of stuff. So yeah, like. No, I, I, can imagine like going to a Catholic school and stuff and having to get beat all the time. Like, that's not wasn't that rampant, but I can tell you in my high school, Catholic high school, they were allowed to paddle us. I never, it never happened, at least while I was there, but they had paddles and they're like, they were allowed to do it. And I think nowadays, capital or corporal punishment has been uh, kind of pushed out, but. They told us straight up, yeah, we, we can, we can, you'd have to put your pants down to the ground, bend over, get spanked. I'm like, um, okay, mm. I'd rather just leave, but they were allowed to, so. Was it like, did you, was it like your parents had to, you know, give them permission? Yeah. Or could, yeah. They signed so a what form. parents going to say that, you know, <laughs> like, yeah, do it. No, no, I, w- I would never do that, but I didn't send my kid to Catholic school, so. Yeah. It's probably better if you don't. <laughs> I right. mean, my kid, he does school online, and it's like, I kind of like it, you know. You know, I get to spend a lot of time with him, and yeah. he, he got bullied a lot, and he doesn't have to worry about that kind of stuff either. That's you good. Know? Okay, so what what else you got there? Um, What else you got? You said you got notes. Well, yeah, you want to... St- I don't know if you wanted to uh, in, see. I want to say like paranormal is in the ghost thing, but I don't know if you wanted to do one specifically on that. But how about oh, you mentioned uh, you mentioned the Bunny Man. Oh, Bunny Man! Yeah, I was reading That's, about him today. Yeah. Um, basically, from what I remember, you had an escape mental patient. And, like, a tunnel, and they always, I think you can remind me, they always found, like, skinned rabbits, and then they found him, like, wearing a bunny mask, am I right? Or mm-hmm. Yeah, it was like he would, sk- he escaped from the middle hospital, he would gut rabbits, and then he would hang them up over this, like, on this bridge or something, um, and, uh. He started killing teenagers or something and hanging them up under the bridge. And yeah, then, the old the old teenagers, you know, at lookout point or make out point. They you find that in most of the stories, but they're they have linked at least in some cases like a missing person in that area, and they just kind of morph the story together. So some of it's true and some of it they added on, but yeah, it's a horrible thing to think about somebody wearing that or just doing that, like running into skinned animals. Yeah, like they said, he would wear like a white suit and then he would like have like the bunny mask on or something, which uh, that would be pretty creepy to see some dude like that. Like there was some couple that saw him. Uh, I can't remember. Like, I don't know if it was out in the woods or something, but. They saw him there driving by, and they were kind of like, what in the world? 
And then he starts wielding out a hatchet at him. He's like, this is private property. And then he like smashes <laughs> their windshield. And they're like, oh, we're getting out of here. And they went the other way. Like, you know, I can't blame them. But yeah, he was, uh, he wields a hatchet too. Like the police were trying to find him one day and they failed to find him. They were chasing him down. So yeah, who knows what happened with that guy, you know? I mean, yeah, so I guess, even even if a piece of that story is true, it's horrifying enough. It is. Yeah, I mean, it's. I don't know. If it, uh, I mean, some of it could seem likely. There was a some kind of like mental patient that escaped. And I think maybe it was the seventies or the eighties. There was a whole documentary I watched years ago, and he would. He was like a child, you know, like predator and stuff, and he would kidnap kids and stuff and then they kept finding all these like children in the woods and that was a real guy and they, for some reason they couldn't find him and it's like well he's just right behind the hospital where there's like a little woods area like you can't find him really right. like it's <laughs> like that doesn't add up to me but um yeah that was like a creepy one too a, he had some kind of weird name too they gave him I think he might have been a clown or something like something that makes it even worse. It's like he liked to dress up like a clown every now and then. I know John Wayne Gacy's the most famous for he was a children's performing clown. Yeah, and at least it wasn't John Wayne Gacy, but that guy's no. so creepy too. Like he's like freak. Any um, clown. I don't I'm not into clowns. I think they're just creepy bastards. Like just no matter what they do, they're creepy like uh, there's nothing nice about them, you know. I don't get it. Maybe um, at the circus, but that's about it. Yeah, the ones at the circus are all right, but they're usually just like Freemason old dudes or something. They're all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, there they're they're farther away from you. Like if you're at a birthday party, they're right in front of you. But I've actually never been to a birthday party with a clown, so. No, I, I haven't that. either. I don't think people really ask for a clown. That's you know. Yeah, that seems weird, but I think that's more of like from the '60s and like the '70s, like yeah, when there wasn't you know all the entertainment you get, there was no Chuck E. Cheese to have your birthday party at, so they had to think of anything but no clowns. <laughs> yeah, there was that. Uh, was that Wrinkles? Did you watch that documentary they did about him? I saw uh, like two of the trailers, and I want to catch it, but. Where like it's found footage and he comes out of the bed. Yeah, like, from it's like yeah. people hire him to like horrify their children or something. Like, like that's yeah, not a very it, nice thing to do. And when it becomes like an urban legend, so the kids like call him, and then he actually shows up. Yeah, so. like. I actually called his phone number and it was like actually like this is Wrinkles the Clown or something. Like, Are you serious? I was, yeah, I was like creepy. <sighs> He's like, leave a voice message if you want me to, like, you know, do a show for you or something. I'm like, no, no. thanks. I just want to <laughs> see if it's real. Um, I do. I call, like, these stupid numbers. If, like, sometimes that are like, this is a scary number. If you call it, I'll always, like, call it for some reason. So something I think is fun. Yeah, we got to be careful. <laughs> yeah. Don't know who, what's going to happen with that on the other end. Why well, do the freaking Star 69 so they can't call me back? Well, that's good. I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. Now, if people know my number, it's like, I don't need these crazy people calling me. Um, I called, like, some UFO dude one time, like, there's, like, some famous number for, like, this, and he was, like, so rude to me. He's like, you're prank calling me, like, because I have a little kid voice or something. So he's like, you're just prank calling me. I'm not going to even talk to you at all. It's like, okay, that's rude. It's like, I'm freaking almost 30 years old. It's <sighs> ridiculous. Um, but yeah, oh, what was that? Uh, I feel like I'm going to butcher the name. Like, we're talking about that that arcade and stuff. Oh. An arcade game. Uh, Pol Polybius? Polybius, yeah. I think I'm saying that right. I think, I don't know. We're probably both saying it wrong, but, you know. <laughs> It was, uh, people could find it easily. It was like an arcade game from the 1980s that just appeared in a f just random arcades around the you know United States. And people would play it and it would cause all these like like horrible things would happen. They'd get headaches, they'd have seizures, they'd have nightmares. 
And they would get really addicted to playing it, though. They would want to continue playing it, even though they were having horrible, like, uh, yeah. side effects. When people did research it, like, there were reports of, like, actual people who had heart attacks in arcades. And mm. there, nobody knows if it's linked to a specific game, but it was the right time period, right when the game came out. And people started to try and track down where, like, the game came from, who did it. And they found one game called that, but it wasn't the one that the Urban Legends based off of. But, oh, and it was, like, you can find it, like, Easter eggs, like, in a Simpsons episode. He's part of what goes to the arcade, and that is in the arcade. And that kind of helps spread it. So. But yeah, like seizures and hypnotizing people, subliminal messages, like government age, men in black were showing up supposedly at arcades where this was. So it's a very big story where it just keeps going around and around. But <clears throat> to this date, nobody's actually found an actual arcade box with that game. But we don't know if it does. It doesn't exist. So. Yeah, they they were saying that like the government agents will just grab data from like the game or something, you know, like they're not getting the money out of it or nothing. Like they're just gra- like that was that's kind of weird. That's kind of spooky, um, you know. And it just disappeared all of a sudden too. Nobody, yeah. nobody saw it, and it's almost it is just like an urban legend. It's like, is it real or is it you know, just kind yeah. of story. When there's no conclusion to the story, that that's the best urban legend because you you can't say it's a joke, you can't say it didn't happen. There's bits of information that were real, but mostly dead ends for those diehard people who really tried to track it down. But there have been some leads that paid off. So you have cases like I forgot the state. I think it was Ohio, maybe, but some kid did have a heart attack just out of the blue playing a video game and that game like was on the registry for that arcade. Nobody there remembers it being there. So you have these bits and pieces where it's supposed to have been there when this happened, but nobody remembers it, but that doesn't mean it did happen. So. Yeah. It's just, it's a legend, you know? Um, yeah, that, that whole situation is like kind of freaky to me. Especially like the men in black because like there there's so many stories about those guys. You know, um and the men in black guys like they say like they don't even have like they wear wigs and stuff like I heard some weird thing about how some lady saw two guys in black suits and like they didn't have eyelashes or eyebrows and like they have these hats that like it looked like the hair was attached to them and stuff and like they were just kind of like odd and they yeah, came in you know Oh, like they they asked her for something, she gave it to them, but like they could read her mind. They said what she was thinking, and she was was like really spooked out by them. Like, yeah, there's there's basically two types of men in black been reported. Where one is almost like the movie, you know, where there's a UFO sighting and these government type people show up in the black suits. But there's also a lot of cases where they are like in suits, look like the men in black, but they're almost alien like where they're really pale or like you said, like their eyes are different or so they they say there's more than one types of men in black, Mm -hmm. but they they showed up for this arcade game. And that's a that's weird in and of itself, like. What are they really trying to get out of that? So that's spooky to me. One thing I think, like you were saying, there's two types of men in black. What if there's like the human, like government agent men in black, and then there's the aliens and, and like trying to be imposters or something. They're trying to be like, oh, but they're like these horrible looking creatures or whatever with their skin yeah. suits on. And like, they're just, yeah, you know, like mimicking humans or something. That's that right. could be like, that could be like the whole idea with them there was yeah. actually the woman i was talking about 
she, I think it was at a bank or something. One of those guys. There was actually footage of those goofy looking guys coming in to the the bank or whatever, and like they they had the weird hats and so like they looked the way she described them. Um, I saw that years ago. I can't remember. It was like some YouTube channel was talking about it. Might have been a uh, Mr. Nightmare or something. You ever watch him? Uh, sometimes. Not or lately. So, but... It might have been him. I I don't know. Or chills or whatever. Like. There's so many different channels like that now. Yeah. Well, there is two famous pictures that anybody can look up, but one in particular in a very small, small town where everybody knows everybody else. There's a picture of a guy in the black suit wearing a fedora because it was in the 70s, and nobody knew who he was. And they, like a day before, they had a UFO sighting and somebody reported it and this guy showed up. So it's one of the, like, if you look up men in black picture, this guy comes up and it's just a, like the movie. It's a guy in a suit wearing sunglasses with a hat, fedora, standing like, like half poking out of a doorway in this very small town. So there, you know, there's some, some roads that lead to proof if you want to call it that, but, it, that's very strange if there's even an inkling of that being true. So, Yeah, that is. like There was some dude I saw, he was talking about how the men in black came into, like, a, he worked at a photo developing place, and they're like, we need these photos developed by this time, or something. They were kind of demanding, and he's like, okay. And then he was like, there's, like, pictures of actual aliens, but they look so real, and he's, like, freaked out. <laughs> like, he's like, there's a crop circle and aliens, and, like, the guys came back and were like, did you look at the photos? And they were, like, interrogating him and stuff. And he's like, no, I heard them. But he said, like, he was like, why didn't I make extra copies? It was so spooky. Um, right. I thought that was kind of a cool story. It happened in the 90s. Well, that's one of the Men in Black type thing is one of those type of legends where it you, you could have seen one and you never would have known. Like, it could have happened at any place, any time. And yeah. you never would have known any better. It's just somebody in a suit. But if they're out there, like, are they taking people? Or are they, you know, how far is it going? So that's what's spooky to me. Well, what if they have those little thingamabobs, like, in the in a black Neuralizer? Room? They're like, Shh. Yeah, it's like, you won't remember this? Yeah, like, that's yeah. the thing. We, we, won't, we won't remember. So it could have happened. Is, is that what the, th- the theory is with them? It's like, you don't remember the seeing them or some some say like talk about like especially with the other type of men and black the non-human type like almost being hypnotized missing time you know showing up in a different spot but nobody's ever seen a neuralizer like the movie but the type of effects have well they won't remember if they see it right (laughs) That's, that's why some will say well they were talking to me here and i ended up you know a mile away or some like an hour felt like a minute, so you never know that could be being neuralized. Yeah, exactly. That's <laughs> I don't know. I just I just think of the movie. It's like they put on the sunglasses. Like you're not gonna remember it. Okay. Um. All right. That was more like alien stuff we talked about. I don't know. I'm it's... getting everything scrambled. No, nah, aliens technically fall in... All this like stuff the stuff kind of comes together sometimes. Yeah, stuff that are stories, half-truths, and, you know, stuff that can't be proven either way yet or that we know of. So, But we can, a later date, touch on aliens itself. So how about uh, you brought up the Skinwalker? You want, you want to hear about that? Oh, yeah, the skinwalker. I was watching that. Yeah. No, like the basic is it's a started as a Navajo Indian tradition where they almost like a witch where somebody it was pure evil, you know, and it was almost it was kind of related to what we talk about as shamans where in the tribe. Want somebody would go out in the wild, wear like the head and skin or fur of an animal, 
and would turn into what we would call a skinwalker, almost like a dogman or werewolf. So that's like the basics. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like uh, I there was some dude that was talking about how he saw a skinwalker or whatever, and like it messed him up pretty bad. But he really got into research and stuff, and like the natives told him that like people choose to be a skinwalker. It's like a choice, and you either like want to choose it, and you know you have to sacrifice a person to become one. And when somebody sees you, what is it? I think it's like if they see you in your human form or something, like turning into skinwalker, they can't ever be a skinwalker again. Something like that. Like Yeah. There's a lot of caveats to that to that story, but Yeah. You know, a lot of reports where, you know, other tribes the skinwalker would come in, take people, or, you know, people would start disappearing and the shaman would show up not too long after or he would or shamans from different tribes would end up in the middle of towns where the skinwalker was seen so many connections that uh, I say based in reality but tie into people who have nothing to do with it so yeah it's, it's far reaching yeah like uh, there's some guy who he like claims like his mom is a skinwalker or something um, and he says that he she was captured by some skinwalkers, and they said, "Okay, do you want to become a skinwalker, or do you want us to kill you?" And uh, she went with like, "Okay, I'll become a skinwalker." And they said, "Okay, we have to take one of your children. You have to sacrifice one of them to become one of us." And I guess she went through with it, but she decided to take her daughter because I guess she's like, "Oh well, to natives, like you know, men are more important or something." I don't know. So she like sacrificed her daughter and you know became a skinwalker and like her son's like yeah like sometimes I see her every now and then but I know she's one of those and it was kind of like that was kind of spooky if I mean I already can't say if it's true or not but it's spooky you know mm, and sad kind of, and really sad but it's like I think just kill me don't kill my <laughs> children you know like don't don't take my kids you know like that yeah. Yeah. Now, have you ever heard of the Skinwalker Ranch? Skinwalker Ranch. No. Yeah. It's uh, I want to say Montana. Yeah, Montana. And I want to say that, but it's if you type it in, it it'll come up. And it's been famous for many, many years for. Pretty much every any activity you could ever hear of, and it started with skinwalkers being seen, and then Bigfoots, and then UFOs, and you name it. Then uh, a group of like I think they were college students, but they came and put cameras up, and all the cameras went out. And then one of the m- most famous stories is the the rancher had all his cattle in one pen and they went in their truck. They came back and all the cattle had been moved into another pen. And when they had people come to look at what's going on, all the railings were magnetized and every, like even stuff in their house had been moved, but no doors have been open. And to this day, people still go out there, but um, people drive up to the gates and they do a lot to keep people out, but it all started with skinwalkers being seen just running through the property. But mm. countless people have lived there and moved out because of all the scary stuff, you know, orbs going in and out of trees, in and out of people. And so, yeah, if you ever get a chance, look up Skinwalker Ranch. It's, it's very spooky. Well, yeah, my ass would be gone, dude, if all this stuff happened. <laughs> so I'm not saying all that. That's it's, one of those, it's one of those situations where the, the rancher spends so much money because, you know, cattle's not cheap, where they're Mm-mm. like, well, I'm not going to leave just because this one, too. But no, in the end, uh, everybody ends up leaving. So I think the government owns it now. But oh, really? Supposedly wow. you can – it's like in between two mountains, so it's not easy to get to, but – Mm, 
I heard about it on coast to coast a couple times and, you know, I've seen even big footers go out to the, down the street, whether you can see the gate to the place, but they made it so impossible to get in. Well, it's but, private property now, isn't it? So it's like, uh, yeah, but so that's like that, uh, Mills hole or whatever. You remember, do you ever hear about that? What's it called? Mills hole. Like he had, Oh yeah. The government owns that property now too. Where it's you know, supposed like, to be bottomless. Yeah, like I think what was it? He was on Art Bell, and basically Art Bell like ruined his whole life, and he's like, I'm sorry, because <laughs> like yeah. But I mean, he he wanted to be on the show, but yeah, it was like creepy. He had that creepy like like hole to like hell or something in his yard. Yeah, kept he kept adding more rope to the rope, and then yeah. like. When he sent the camera down, and yeah, that it's an interesting story, and there's pictures of supposedly the hole, but like there's been a couple instances of like holes to nowhere. So yeah, well, something turned out to be a hoax on that situation, but I don't know if it was like from the guy that lived there. But like people were saying, oh, this is from the hole or whatever. You can hear it. It sounds like hell or something. That turned out that was from like a horror movie from the 70s or something. Right. And like, so it's like, I, I think they might even played that on Art Bell. So it's like, it, but it was like part of the hoax that I think somebody sent it to him. was like, this is what it sounds like. And he like put it on the show. Well, if y'all, if you ever want to see a real quote unquote hole situation, there's a video, it's on YouTube, and if you look up Louisiana sinkhole, and it turns out it's a salt mine, a salt dome, mm -hmm. that's under the swamp, and it opened up, and there's videos of just everything going in it. It's, you know, it's over, uh, the river's over it, or some swamp. Whole oak trees just being swallowed up. It's like and, the Bermuda Triangle or something. It's like sucking everything. Yeah, it's, yeah. It'll come right up if you look for it. And I think it, it eventually filled up, but it was the salt dome, and it cracked open. But people mm -hmm. were just like, "Okay, the swamp's disappearing. Whole trees are being sucked in, and it's not easy to find out." But so there are real holes out there, and I don't want to go in any of them. So. Yeah, I don't want to go near that. Um. Like, isn't that some sort of natural occurrence, though, that can happen where, like, you know, like the Bermuda Triangle, I think that's, like, a natural thing that can happen it's in very few places where, you know, it's, like, a big vortex that's sucking things in, like, you know. Well, it's I can... not common or something. Yeah, there's a, the... Uh, what is it? This... I don't say the... It's something of silence, and it's in Mexico... And like if right below the border, the the zone of silence. That's what it's called. And like oh, people have fired, like the military has fired missiles in it, and the missiles disappear. Like also, like they had, I think um, NASA launched a rocket, and the rocket failed, and it it disappeared from Florida and ended up there. So you have that, and I know there's the Jersey Triangle where it's on land, but it's like the, the points of the triangle is a swamp, the Pine Barrens where the Jersey Devil is, and another one, and people and cars, planes, everything. So uh, there are places that, sure, yeah, it's not even a hole, so it's even worse because everything just disappears and or electronics don't work no matter what you bring in there. Mm -hmm. So... And then the Devil's Triangle, which is in the Sea of Japan, that's just like the Bermuda Triangle. But take that as if you will. I, I I'll stay out of that. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't. <laughs> I don't have any interest going there. Um, what? Sorry. Uh, no, no. Uh, real think. quick. My memory is so bad. That's all right. Well, I was just gonna say. Uh, my parents went to the Bahamas once, and their plane went through one of the corners of the Bermuda Triangle. Really? Yeah, nothing happened, but my, my dad was like, yeah, we went right through the corner, and I'm like, great. So. <laughs> well, at least they didn't get sucked in. Like that. Yeah. But, yeah, there's many places where even, oddly enough, like, 
in some Bigfoot reports where people have cameras and the batteries drain instantly and your cell phone doesn't work or your compass starts spinning. So there's no explanation in one way or the other what's going on in any of these places. Yeah, and maybe it's just like some sort of like natural occurrence. So like just, you know, this world's kind of mysterious. We can't quite figure it out. Like it's just, you know, the weirdest. Just being, you know, yeah, the earth is just very strange. I don't understand it. Yeah. I'm with you on that. I don't go to too many. I I do some quote-unquote investigations but i'm i'm down here in the swamp where like i think i mentioned it to you we had the rougarou oh yeah you're talking about you're gonna look for the rougarou well problem is you gotta have a, a boat pretty much to get around to any of these places but it's pretty much like the skinwalker where the curse is 101 days and you have to like give your blood to the next person and it keeps carrying on so it's it's weird it's almost identical storyline to where it's normal people it happens to and like there was actually a cop show about people down in the swamps like i say in the swamps but they live next to it but in the show the cops caught these people in the woods and they were looking for the Rougarou. So it happened. Well, maybe, maybe the Rougarou is like the same as the Skinwalker, but they just call it different things. It could be because yeah. I heard the Skinwalkers could be anywhere. They don't necessarily have to be in that native land. They right. can appear anywhere. So, like, in every, like, you know, when there's legends that are worldwide, every culture has a different name for it, but it's basically they're describing the same stuff, you know? That just, That's. That's Bigfoot and werewolves go back to, you know, medieval times and beyond where it's just like you, not like the movies per se, but a person who changes into something. So like maybe you, shifters and stuff. Right. It could all be the same thing, just different versions, different places, you know. Well, yeah, like maybe the skinwalkers, maybe they come from portals and all that. Like that we were talking about that. Like last Saturday, like portals and stuff, you know, um, where, wherever they say the per- portals are, there seems to be a bunch of funky stuff that happens in those areas. There's a, a couple people who produced pictures of vortexes and claim, you know, Bigfoots or stuff will go. That's how they disappear and we can't find them. And you find it for everything. Like that's how aliens get around. That's how, you know. Anything, if it's a portal, there's nothing we can do about it. But, you know, a lot of these cryptids can cloak where, like the Predator movie, where they'll be right there in front of you and there's no way you can know about it. Yeah. Well, yeah, like Uh, supernatural stuff, a lot of time it's like, I mean, like it might be right in front of us. We can't see it. There was some glaucoma medicine that was causing people to see supernatural things have you heard of that no they were giving it to old people it's like these eye drops and there was a couple of old people and the doctors were kind of rude to them they said oh if you're hallucinating it's because you have schizophrenia or something but there was like some old guy he had the drops his his daughter gave him some of the eye drops and he started seeing like demons all around him and stuff like these horrible looking (laughs) creatures and everybody's like what are you talking about he's like i'm horrified and he had to wait for the medicine like you know, um, subside or, you know, then he stopped seeing them. He's like, I'm not using that again. I don't want anything to do with it. And there was some woman, like, some guy named Tom Horn. His mom used it, but she only used it in one eye. And she said that she could see, yeah, evil stuff all in her house everywhere. It's like these creatures. And um, she also said she saw, like, it looked like what appeared to be, like, an angel, like, sitting next to her, like, protecting her from the stuff. But she just kept that other eye coverage. She's like, I don't want to see this. This is like really disturbing. <laughs> so, yeah, like there's some medicine that's causing people to see. It's almost like their spiritual eyes are open or something. It's, it sounds pretty creepy. Like, I don't, I don't want to try that. Well, think of like, um, 
like the Salem witch situation. Mm-hmm. One of the one of the theories was that uh, they had mold on the bread that was like a yeah. poison, like a mushroom. So who so knows how like many? Everybody's uh, just high or something. Well, like, you're well, a well, like like the drops, like you were able to see differently, or you know, open a different part of your brain, or yeah. which is some are natural, like whatever those eye drops were made out of, or you know, the mold on a bread, but... Yeah. Know, well, there's all kinds of weird stuff in medicine, like, you know, uh, like, I was talking to somebody last night, they told me, like, pork is in vaccines and stuff, I didn't know that. Like, just, there's just so many things in them. We Wait, don't know pork? What's pork, yeah, they put pork in, huh. like, vaccines. Wow. I'm not sure, like, I can't remember. She described, like, why, but I'm not, like, smart enough to remember it. But, like, there's something to it, like, science. Um, but, yeah, they put, they just put a lot of stuff in those, like, metals and pork, apparently. Like, so you can get some bacon shots or something, I guess. <laughs> Never heard of that one, but interesting. To think. I always thought the, the Salem witch trials, it was, like, all the Christians got high off some mushrooms and then they blamed each other, like, you're a witch, you're a witch. Or like, that's how I always portrayed it, but I don't know. Um, I I think of it where, in the basic story, you have three girls who started pointing fingers at other people, but in the, the, the it all really started because there was a guy and a girl. So, to me, it's like, okay, so people were probably cheating on each other, and what's the easier way than to say they're evil and everybody believed it out of paranoia? That's yeah, not well, what I think. Well, also back in those days, like if somebody calls you a witch, like, yeah, you're going to get burned and stuff. Like, you know. Um, yeah, they, they made a book on how to pick out a witch and deal with it. The witch's hammer. Yeah, like, like you just couldn't, couldn't get away with that, you know. They had pitchforks yeah. and everything, you know. I, different I, time period. I always want to vis- go visit Salem, where it happened, and some of the buildings are still there. But where was it? Something. Where was that at? Was it in England or something? Or no, Salem, Massachusetts. Okay. Massachusetts. I always say that weird, but Massachusetts. Yeah. Well, um, oh. Okay. Actually, I was thinking of uh, the Jack the Ripper for whatever reason. I don't even know why. Um, you know they got Winston cigarettes. Oh, Winston's my dad. It's like Winston him. Salem, and Winston I believe Salem. that's where the where the cigarettes are made, and that's the connection I always remember. Because, but yeah, that's on my bucket list. Kind of creepy, but I'd like to check that out one day. Well, you live like around all the voodoo's and stuff, like. You need to start like trying to get some ghosts or some ghosts. <laughs> well, something. um, they got Mary LeBeau, the voodoo queen. Um, her grave, if you go and put an X on it, it's supposed to bring you good luck, but they kind of it got out of hand, and I think you can't get to it anymore. Um, mm-hmm. and a lot of a lot of the plantation houses, most are run down. So you could just die by the thing falling on you. But uh, they have one in a place called Chalmette where the story, the legend is it, on a certain, you know, on the right night, you never know when, but you would see a light going through the house and it would go to the roof, go and then fall off the roof. And somebody in the past, that's how they committed suicide by jumping off the roof. So you well, get those kind of those kind of tales. Yeah, wow. Yeah, I've never heard all that stuff. That's no. I'm trying to think of. You know, the the problem is a lot of the these stories have, end up with a story has a slave in it and something went wrong and it's never a nice story, but the places some are extremely beautiful like um one of them was in the movie Forrest Gump, where he lived, was one of our plantation houses. So they look great, but you know, some some are so big and 
like I was telling you, they re-renovated the slave quarters for people to sleep in, and that's where I slept in one of the sleep. Like, it looks like a little cottage, but it used to be the slave quarters, so. Oh, really? You slept in the slave <laughs> Yeah, you wouldn't know by being in it, but uh, that's when I saw two "quote unquote" ghosts. So they're, they're oh, yeah. all haunted. So that, that was where you saw those little girls or something, the ones that they yeah. Had. And the the story I told ended up being on TV, and so it's like, oh, there's no way I could have known that. But there's still there's pictures that exist of like little kids in the photos mm -hmm. like on you can find them on the internet but yeah almost all the plantation houses are, are haunted like i said they take haunted tours through the city and because a lot of the buildings are still standing from the 1800s so oh, wow. there's photos of them yeah um wow the one the one i was at is the myrtles plantation it's m y r uh, e T L E S. So I need to look into that. That sounds kind of yeah, yeah. There's uh, that story is like the the head slave woman was uh sleeping with the man of the house, and to keep her around, she was poisoning the kids by putting nightshade or I believe in the food, but she went. She did too much, killed the kids, so mm -hmm. they killed her, and she's the one haunting the place. But there's pictures of the kids, supposedly. I mean, some of the pictures are so old, it's doubtful they've been faked in any way. And given stories like mine, it's like, oh. <laughs> so. Wow. That's yeah. Crazy. Yeah, other than that, you got to get in a boat and go in the swamp and fight alligators. So. <laughs> fight all the alligators. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're around all the alligators. You ever eat the alligators? Yeah. All the, you can buy them in the grocery store. The meat. Does it does it taste good? I, I feel like I've had it's, alligator before. It's like any other meat. It's just a little tougher depending on how people make it, but it's good. It's probably. I feel like it could probably be good if it's like nuggets or something. But I saw this uh, lady. I was eating a big old alligator. Have you seen that video on YouTube? She's eating an eating. alligator? It's like a big alligator. It looks. It made it look gross the way she had it. It was just displayed or whatever, basically. like Almost like a pig with an apple in its mouth type of display. It made it not look appetizing to me. Like the way she, like just having a whole. But I'm not really into eating animals like whole like that, you know? No. <laughs> my, when I had it, my uncle cooked it. And it, it looked like. Well, they did make alligator balls, you know, so little. You call them nuggets if you want, but otherwise it just looks like like fish, like fried fish, but it's alligator meat. Yeah, I see. Like that sounds appetizing. Like I'll eat that, but I'm not eating a whole freaking alligator. Like it was awful, <laughs> girl. She got a lot of I, views though. I used to have a picture. I think it was on my Facebook. Me and the guy Max, you might see in my videos, mm -hmm. and we went to one of our state parks and we walked within like three feet of an alligator who was sleeping. So they're everywhere. Like just like wow. snakes. They're just everywhere, but they can also be as gigantic as if you have ever seen the show swamp people, like they can get 15 feet, <laughs> but you got to get out there to, to get run into those. But Mhm. Mm that's what we have to deal with. But I yeah, did look in. That's I'm scary. Sorry. That's scary. You got to deal with the alligators. No, well, you got to. The snakes are more of a problem because I live in an apartment complex and I've run into a couple snakes here. So. Oh, really? Poisonous ones? Not the ones I saw, but I treat them all the same. Yeah. I mean, I know. We have snakes out here too. I live out in the country and, you know, there's. I a lot of snakes out here. I did look into your octopus story. Oh, really? And I, I went on like on the maps and saw the Lake Thunderbird and the area and looked into it. And that's I, I don't like underwater things because 
you can't ever see it coming. You'll never know. And I found that to be really interesting. Yeah, hold on. Sorry. The, okay. I don't got any mods tonight. <laughs> Trying to take care of that. Right there. <laughs> All right, sorry. It's okay. All right, now I feel like I lost the train of thought. I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> Hold on, let me ask my husband. All right, sorry. I was like, mold the channel. <laughs> um, now what were we talking about? Dang it. I knew this was going to happen. The last thing I, I said, I was telling you, I looked up your octopus. Oh, yeah, yeah the, the octopus here in Oklahoma. What'd you yeah. find out about it? No more than you had mentioned, but like some really intense stories like that don't make sense. Doesn't mean it was that, but you know, if you ever really look into it, almost every lake big enough has a monster of some sort. Like, you know, we talk about Loch Ness, but you've heard of Champ in Lake Champlain. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the same thing, you know, that's, Almost in Canada, that's so high up. But mm -hmm. you know, like when I looked up for Lake Thunderbird, that's like in the middle of the state. <laughs> you know, it's like there's no other water around it, and so you can see why people would be there. And you know, if any of it's like, there's no explanation. I don't know how they got to the whole octopus theory, but it's still intriguing. Yeah, well, I've heard of people, like, getting drowned and stuff by it, you know. Um, it's like something with tentacles grab me or something. Like that, you know, we, I, there usually isn't stuff like that. We don't got no oceans out here. We only got lakes and stuff. They're all man-made. But, um, yeah. What a, I, I should have wrote down more stuff. I just had freaking a few well, things where I don't. Uh, let's see. There's there's so many cryptids. Like you're not far from Falk, Arkansas, with the Falk monster. There was a movie called The Legend of Boggy Creek. Mm -hmm. You ever heard of that one? Yeah, and that's pretty much Texarkana. It is Texarkana, so it's pretty much the border of all of us. And that's basically what I'm. I would be dealing with where the bog, the bog, or the swamps, and then if you were to go up the Mississippi, there's Momo, the Missouri monster, which is supposed to be just like a Bigfoot. Um, Momo is that? Yeah, I think it's M O M O. Is that, that, from is that thing that calls people or something, or is that something else? Calls people. What is that? Like some I don't know, the Momo creature or something that's like. Like contacting people and telling them to hurt themselves. Is that like different? Oh, no. Were you thinking of that's the. Um, Is it the something. Moth uh, man? No, that there's like move, some. Though. There's. That's stupid. There's something like some kind of like the Momo or whatever. And it's like this weird, like big eyed thing. And it's like tells kids to hurt themselves. And like it's mm, like you want to play a game or something that's online. Maybe it's not the same thing. Huh. Like, but it was something. Oh, with the. With the stretch face and the black hair and the bird feet, yeah, yeah, that's that's a like an internet creepy. Yeah, costume. I was gonna say that's yeah, that's like a made up thing, right? Or... No, I would. I don't think that would even be in the the unknown cryptid field, but uh... yeah, because it's like, well, the creepy pastas they try to tell us, oh, this is like real, but you know, we're talking about Slender Man. It's like silly stuff. It's like. Nobody ever talks about seeing that thing. Like, you know, that's just a story somebody made up, you know, for fun. A couple doctored pictures, and then they made a bad movie about it. So, Yeah. I heard it's bad. i never seen it because I heard it's so bad. But uh, let's see. Um, we mentioned the Pine Barrens in New Jersey. Have you heard of the Jersey Devil? I don't know much about it. It sounds familiar, but you have to tell me what the deal is with him. That's um, the story is um, 
the family was called the Leeds family. And I think it's connected to Benjamin Franklin, but don't quote me on that. But uh, when she had her 13th child, it went so bad, she cursed it or somebody cursed the baby. And it came out with a horse's head and horse's hooves, only about three or four feet tall with wings. And to this day, the stories that you hear is like they find hooved footprints on the roofs in the snow and people go in the Pine Barrens and disappear. So that's that's the cryptid for that area. Mm-hmm. Pretty pretty spooky. Um, uh, how about, oh, oh, I did hear that. Actually, I do remember that. But that's all I really know about it. It's like the woman gives birth to the weird like bat thing or whatever. That's pretty much it, it for that story. Like now, it's the people who see like a little horse-headed demon up or flying next to in the moonlight, or you know, that's where you end up with that. Which is pretty much if you turn it into the like Mothman, where you know, make it a six-foot flying thing, people see next to their car, and <laughs> or see it in before the bridge falls. So there's flying cryptids and then you know bipedal where you have bigfoot or the lizard man of uh north carolina where people see a four to six foot tall reptilian lizard Mm -hmm. you know where there's handprints have been found on cars that are unexplainable so you get there's also reptilians where people think like government officials are reptile reptilians like reptilian going to take over the world type of stories yeah i've heard that stuff like they said like george bush is a reptilian bill clinton i think bill clinton's kind of like weird but there was like a video of him where he looked like he was under some sort of like hypnosis and that kind of spooked me out oh my god what if it is? i was like that's creepy <laughs> but who knows oh there's people who like still look at current officials and they see their how fast or slow they blink if they stop blinking oh, like they, they know how somehow they know how to find a, an artificial intelligence person but I, I don't find any weight in that but because if there was an like an Illuminati or New World Order there's nothing you or I are going to be able to do about it so yeah, well, like the just like the reptilian videos could be really dumb to me. It's like look at that news reporter, like they're shape shifting. It's just like, dude, it's just a bad quality TV or something. You know, it's like it's just a crappy video. Um, but you know, whenever I was younger, I thought that stuff was kind of cool. You know, it's like, whoa, dude, they're transforming. <laughs> yeah, it's an it's interesting to think of, but there's not much proof anybody's come up with except like you said like crappy videos of like a fuzz in the in the picture it's like oh look they did that or that person's telling that person what to say with their mind and it's like well how would you even know that but (laughs) yeah like that's kind of silly oh uh i just was reminded have you ever heard of the movie the men who stare at goats I haven't watched it. I know what it is, so. I recommend it because some of it's based in reality. Um, it was, you know, a PSYOP program, like, trying to use psychics as a military weapon. And the name of the movie comes from somebody who supposedly stopped a, a, a goat's heart and it keeled over. But the guy who ran the PSYOP program like he came up with the slogan for the army be all you can be mm-hmm. and they actually use that in real life um yeah. supposedly they, they put like acid in people's water just to see what would happen which oh. which connects almost to the mk ultra test but um that's like, so evil <laughs> yeah but in the movie like they they go through like what could have happened and what might have happened in some reports like um, remote viewing where people can write down yeah, they can see stuff like yeah what's happening somewhere else in the world 
Um, they could do cloud bursting where they would look at a cloud and make it separate. Like really weird stuff. But like if there's 10 things in the movie, two may, are, are like really based on reality. And the whole thing's based on like psychic warfare. But yeah, I, I, I would put that on your list because it, it's also funny. And it takes a funny look at it, but some of the stuff ended up being true. So, yeah, I need to look into that. Like, I have heard of that movie. I just like I don't know what it was about, so I never really thought about watching it. Um, yeah, the MK Ultra stuff it, it, it's pretty creepy. There's a guy named Blitz Springmeyer. He wrote these humongous books about it, and he knows an awful lot about it. And there's like some people say he's did that to people before. And it's like. He knows every detail on how to do it, so maybe he, do- maybe he does have some victims or something, you know. Well, they, the government did come out and say they did test like what LSD would do to people, so mm-hmm. that's the basis of like, well, how far did they go? And that's MK totally Ultra, wrong. yeah, and like that would lead into like you hear. Like the when crack cocaine came around, they were given that to impoverished parts of the city to try and you know weed it out or what whatever. But yeah, that all goes back to what is the government doing? Like who can we trust? You know, in the end, I, I don't trust them at all. But <laughs> well, my dad was telling about because you know, like he he grew up in the seventies. He said that they were giving out these sandwiches that had acid in them and like one of his teachers at a school got one and he permanently was like his brain was ruined after that like he he had to go to the mental ward it was it was just the meanest thing they could have did to him my dad was like he was a good guy he didn't deserve that and he was just perma fried after it like you know some people just can never go back from that no i couldn't imagine like the point of it but you know, like, I think in the Vietnam War, like, they would, the, the enemy was using heroin to fight better, or we were mm-hmm. pumping it in. Nobody knows exactly, because, you know, how do you fact check something like that? But it all leads to just, like, who's who's doing what to who, and who's watching us, and, you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, Snowden revealed like the NSA is constantly watching us. I mean, that is like a thing that we have to deal with, you know. That's why, you know, I keep tape all over my camera and stuff. I'm like, don't people watch me all the time? Like, yeah. You know? I actually, I heard you say that. And um, we met a person or two who, who, like, they won't say certain words out loud or they won't text certain things. But in reality, if they wanted to, if they were watching everybody, I don't know how they would process that data. Like exactly, I know, I know. It's like it's it's like every single person, but I'm still like, just in case, like my camera's being watched or something. Like I don't want to watch. Like I want privacy, so I I just always put the tape on it whenever I'm not streaming. I I I personally think they're looking for flag words. You know, yeah. The word bomb comes up, and then they'll try and find out who you are. Or, you know, if you're a drug dealer, yeah, you might want to. <laughs> well, but Snowden no. said they were just like, a lot of the NSA guys were violating people's space and privacy. And, you know, uh, Mark Zuckerberg, he says that everybody that signs up for Facebook is an idiot because he has all their information. And, like, yeah. you know, he's a creep. And, um, yeah, I don't know. I want I want privacy, even though, like, yeah, they probably aren't watching me. There's so many people. I still like to take precaution, I guess, like, you know. Remember recently? It's when, un-American to take our privacy away. I think you know. Yeah. Remember recently they had an app where it would age you. Like. Oh yeah. They said that was keeping track of people, because so many people signed up. So, yeah, you like you never know what they're trying to do to get to us, because people yeah like go for the new fad no matter what it is. Mitomo or whatever you remember that. For Nintendo, I had one of those, yeah. and I was like, I heard that they're just trying to gather up information about me. So I was like, I put like stupid answers in it and stuff, and I was like, I don't want them to know stuff about me because Facebook will, Facebook is obviously listening to me. 
Because they pop up ads for stuff I'll be talking about, or like just, you know, they're always trying to like sell stuff to me, stuff that I like. You know, I'm like, how do they know what I like? Or how do they know about like, you know, um, my sister said she had a big gulp sitting by her camera or whatever on her computer. And then all of a sudden there's like ads for big gulps and stuff. She's like, they're watching me with my big gulps. I'm like, well, I know. I don't know. I can tell you from, at least on Instagram, like, when you see something go by, like, I look into, like, camping stuff or hunting. Like, they know that, and then that's, even YouTube, like, once you look mm -hmm. something up, you get in that algorithm. But, yeah, you don't know how far it goes to where, like, the fact that they can turn on your phone for your camera or your laptop or, or whatnot, but we'll mm -hmm. never know when that is. Oh, so. like, but since we don't know, I, I like to just keep the camera covered. No, I don't. In, yeah. in, in the end, I don't blame you, but some people think they're watching like every single thing, like every text message, and I'll just say they would need a million people to cipher everybody. Yeah. There's so many people. Look at, look at how many videos people make on YouTube. You know, and what, the stuff people get away with. I think it's just like the point you made where it's like, I don't know when they're watching. So it's like, I'm just going to try to play it safe. You know? Yeah. People get away with so much crazy stuff that I don't know how they're not stepping in too much, but they might just be watching and documenting or, you know. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. Um, I don't. I don't like it though. I feel like it's un-American. I don't want my rights taken like that. You know. Yeah. I feel like, I don't think Snowden was a bad guy. I know, like politicians are like, "Oh, he betrayed us," but it's like we're we deserve to know as Americans what's happening if our phones are tapped and stuff. We have a right to know. Well, yeah, especially now that like everybody needs a phone. There's no real more landlines people use. And all of our, all of our stuff goes to the Wi-Fi, be it even like your TV to your phone to your uh, laptop to your tablet. You know, it all goes through one place. And now all the companies have been reduced. And, you know, like, so, yeah, everybody needs a cell phone. So we're kind of stuck where it's like we can't trust it, but we kind of need it. So, there's no way to truly protect ourselves. Well, mm -hmm. you can just be a, just continue to be good people, I guess. So, you know. Yeah. Well, it's like I don't want people seeing me get dressed, or you know, I just I need some privacy. You know, no? everybody deserves privacy. It's also just the principle, I guess, bothers me. It's like the fact that people are violating my space without my permission. I don't like that. You know, um, I think it's wrong. No, you're right. I kind of, I kind of separated myself from Facebook to where, like, Facebook for me is like family and like people I went to high school with, and mm -hmm. then I do Instagram because I'll put up like a connection to the videos I put up on YouTube, and then there's YouTube where you know people see us all for who we are and you know what we're doing. That's the way I kind of separate it, but. I try not to give too much info wherever I go, but you know, mm -hmm. people look at the whole doxing thing. Like there's going to be a point where you can't control it, but I don't think there's enough of anything on me where like if people were to like give out my info, it's like, so what, you know, Yeah. that's why, I, that's why I don't get into the drama because you don't want to piss anybody off because it takes one crazy person to make something wrong. So, yeah, it it does. Like people, they just get a little too crazy about stuff, especially online stuff. It's like uh, I don't want any part of that. No, that's you can't you can't escape it sometimes. But I I've watched you recently get dragged back in, and you don't want to have anything to do with it. And that's an example of like <laughs> you can't escape it sometimes. But that's because certain people are bad, and. That's how they want to live, and it's like, no thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. But, like, I, I don't know. I want to, I want to like do real videos and stuff like that people think are fun and interesting, and you know, 
Maybe well, we can we're, we're trying we can to bring do. people to these legends and stuff. Maybe people want to look into these, like after we talk about them and stuff, you know, like yeah, something interesting for them to do. Um, because I I do like spending a lot of time just researching <laughs> the supernatural, the unusual. Like we were talking about MK Ultra, even like that's awesome. something that really interests me. Um, it's frightening sometimes, but you know, sometimes like there's something in me that sometimes I like. You enjoy the scare, but I don't know. It's a weird thing. Like, yeah. I don't know if it's like an adrenaline thing or something like adrenaline rush. Well, that's why we go to we go to scary movies or go on a carnival ride. It's you know, or especially horror movies where we, we know we're going to be scared, but we enjoy it. But we also know in the back of our minds we're also a little bit safe. But then we'll go to a, a haunted house and I eat. I don't mean a real, real one, but like for Halloween, we mm -hmm. love that, that adrenaline scare, but you can take that extra step and go to an actual haunted house and there's no telling. So I get it, so scared of like those fake ones though. I went <laughs> to this fake one and like, there's like Freddy Krueger, like all the main like horror dudes. And I was like screaming and I was, I didn't know it was going to be a wimp like that. And my son was just kind of like. He was like hanging on to me, and my brother was like laughing at us because we were like actually scared of like people dressed up. Like, and then we like when we walked out at the end, there was a dude that was hanging in a tree, but he had like a cord around him. We thought he was really gonna jump on us, and we all screamed. We're like, ah! And then like he's attached. Like, yeah, that was. And then there was a random Darth Maul at the end of it too, and he's like, "What's up?" I was like, "Okay, that's random." <laughs> Well, there's actually a, a famous story, and this, if I not remember, it is real, but they had a, a woman who hung herself, and people thought it was a Halloween decoration, so she hung there for like three or four days. Oh, yeah, that happened uh, this year, or last year, right? That happened again. Oh, uh, I don't remember when, but... There was some I guy that, that, yeah, he yeah. thought he was a decoration, too. There's a, a hotel here where I'm from called the Skirvin Hotel, and there was a a lady. She was a maid, and um, there was some like high up like politician that would stay there, or something, something like the stories like that. And he 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 hooked up with her. He had an affair. He got her pregnant, and he made her stay in that room till she had the baby. And and she had the baby, and like she was still forced to just she was like quarantined in that room. So she just jumped out the window, like killed herself because she couldn't stand being locked away like that anymore. And they say she haunts the place. And it's a really weird, like, they got this really creepy old elevator. It's it's pretty spooky. And they got pictures of politicians everywhere. And it's it's a weird place. I never stayed there, but I just went in there. Like, I just wanted to see what it's like. We have the Roosevelt Hotel. It's totally haunted. But I think every city has that where you name the building or, you know, this area or this, you name it. Um, you ever, you remember the movie came out not too long ago called La Lorena? La Lorena. About oh, a woman in I've white. I've heard of it. I've heard well, of that, that. I didn't watch it. The movie supposedly wasn't that great, but the, the story behind it actually is part of a, a Mexican like tale but some of that has story in uh, Louisiana and uh, it's all based around a, a woman who drowns her kids out of sorrow and she's she's uh, I think it translates to like we weeping woman and she's constantly crying for her kids and like the movie kind of messed it up but like the tale of it is, you know, there's a million women in white stories or, you know, like women on the side of the road dressed in white, mm -hmm. like as a hitch, she's a hitchhiker gets in, she never existed or, you know, that person died a long time ago. So, you know, everybody should like, you never know what story is in your area or, you know, your state or, you know, so. I found yeah. it funny that that came up for our state where yeah, the a weeping woman. 
Yeah, I actually heard that story because, like, my mom saw that thing, like, back, I don't even know when, like, the 70s or so, like, so her dad was a truck driver, and they were, like, passing through, and they were on this road that basically, there's just water, you know, it's like the road and the water, and she's just, like, floating over the water, and they're like, what in the world? And they saw her that night, and then the next morning, there was, like, reports of seeing her in a bunch of car wrecks, so people think she's linked to these car wrecks and stuff, like, she causes car wrecks, um, and a lot of people died and stuff after they had seen that thing. You know, mm-hmm. the, there were survivors, like, yeah, there was this creepy lady in white walking around here. Yeah, um, a lot of in lady in white stories, and I don't know why whites like the key, but... I don't know. Like, some people say, oh, she, like, her her husband stood her up or something, so she killed herself. Or, like, there's all these different legends and stuff about it. Um, but it was creepy that my mom was telling me about that. She's like, yeah, we had the newspaper and we saw it and we were so freaked out. You know? <laughs> uh, we're like, why is she walking on the water anyway? It's like... My mom, has a, my mom has a lot of creepy stories like that because of uh, my parents, like I was telling you, they they did exorcisms and stuff. And, like, when they were in Bible college, um, both of them just started seeing a bunch of creepy stuff when they were in school. And they never had that. They never really dealt with supernatural stuff till they went to Bible college. And they started seeing a bunch of it and dealing with exorcisms. And my dad was telling me about his cousin that was in a cult, and he was trying to get him to join. He said his face just looked like Satan or something. He's like, you look like the straight-up devil. And he's like, what are you talking about? It's like, your face. It's like, you look scary. And he gave my dad these tapes, and they had these repetitive things that they had to say. And I don't know. It's creepy. And my mom, told me, my mom told me this horrible story. that Why did she tell it to me when I was a little kid? It was, it was horrible. Like... Uh, she said there was a child that came to her door, sort of like those black-eyed children. Oh, boy, yeah, buddy. She said that this little girl was at her door, and, you know, um, all this, they, she had a big wooden deadbolt thing, you know, like a piece of wood yeah. that kept the door shut. She said she heard it move, and then all of a sudden this child is in the house. And my mom was kind of like, you know, you know, are you okay? Like, who are you? But my mom thought it was a little girl, so she talked to this thing for like two hours and she noticed she noticed that this little girl looked like her exactly like her as a little girl oh, wow. and then she was all like wait a minute like you're a devil or so she's like you're a demon because she just was in bible college and then she said it turned into this horrible beast or something and then um it disappeared and then she called my dad she just started dating my dad at the time and she told him what happened and she was crying but that story scared me so much. It's like it scared I me imagine. so much. I was like, "Why did you gotta tell that to me?" <laughs> but they they had all kinds of stories, just tons of them that they would tell us and scare us, you know. Yeah, that, well, I don't know. I, I there's a couple. I have relatives and friends who seen, like, other rel- dead relatives, like, in their closet looking at them, or one that stuck out to me, I had a friend who he and his brother and his mom all saw the same ghost, if you will, and they did some research on the house and this, till finally somebody told them, well, what you got to do is ask the, the spirit what they want, who they are, And that should help. And they said the next time they saw it, they asked who they were and what they were looking for. And it turned around and walked away and never came back. Mm. So, like, I don't know how that person knew, but, you know, multiple people, you know, that's like you said, when when there's other people to collaborate your story or so you don't feel crazy. So... Yeah, it's like you don't feel crazy, but then you're also like, kind of like, oh, uh, I'd rather be crazy than scary. <laughs> like, I don't want that to be real. Um, right? Yeah. Ugh. Well, any if if anybody listening or you know wants to put in the comments or anything like that about the area they're in, they don't have to give actual locations or just their state. We'll, I'll be happy to look up the local legends because there's always one 
you know, you name it. There's always a story to go with the area. And usually they cross over like the vanishing hitchhikers or, you know, the women in white here or, you know, the ghost kids or so, you know. Yeah, there, there really is like legends like this everywhere. <laughs> so that's just something, you know, it's interesting to, and I like to find out more about what's going on with different areas and, you know, because here there's certain ones, but some are so old that you can't do anything about it. But, you know, that's why I like cryptids because you can go to any state. There's something new, some and sightings of this and that to this day, you name it, you know, so. Well, yeah, but like you said, like Bigfoot, like he's like everywhere. Like he's literally just, he can yeah. possibly be in like all the states. There's like everybody sees that. Well, there's, you know, and we should do one just on Bigfoot because there's one for almost every continent. And even in just the United States, there's different kinds. You know, we have the skunk ape down here where it's smaller, like a chimp, chimpanzee. You have the big ones are in the Pacific Northwest. You have uh, the East Coast. There's every, Everyone looks different, but it, it adapts to the area they're in. There's at least, uh, like, uh, I think over a couple thousand reports every year from doctors and lawyers and policemen and mayors and to the simple farmer who has nothing to gain from telling the story. Footprints mm -hmm. are cast all the time. And we always say all it takes is one story to be true for there to be something. So, like, I think yeah, exactly. we should – like do one just on that or that that type so we could yeah uh, we should there's, there's a lot on bigfoot like there's, you guys talk about him a lot um also it'd be fun to review videos and be like okay. do we think it's real or not like you know what i mean that would be kind of fun yeah, yeah um there was a sh uh, i used to watch one that did that and like they would vote on it and so uh yeah i could bring a bunch of like some that are ha like the podcast i was on earlier there was two that videos that came out one's a drone footage and one was some um, a family fishing and there's a big figure out and you can see it so i can bring those yeah that that's something that i think would be fun is if we just went over them and we just like try to analyze them as much as we can. Sure. Like, check out the details and stuff, and just, like, you know, say, like, what we think. Well. Oh. Arizona. Somebody said they're in oh, Arizona. Okay. So, I wonder what, well, Arizona's where those portals are at. So, there's a lot of stuff that we can talk about about those. You know, believe, weird believe creatures it or not, coming out of those. Believe it or not, there are Bigfoot sightings in Arizona. Mm -hmm. It's because it's not all just desert, so um, I'll definitely well, get he, some info on that. Just, oh, is he just out like in the woodsy areas, or like is it everywhere? Like, like now, not in the middle of suburbia per se, <laughs> but just walking around the you city. Know, There's a big <laughs> no. The, many people are building more and more into the woods or near the woods, you know, yeah. or many. Many states people live in the the valleys of the mountains, so mm -hmm. they come in from out of there, or like you know anywhere there's caves or anywhere like out here there wouldn't be no caves, but you know like there's the Honey Island Swamp Monster, which is the Pearl River is the border of Mississippi and Louisiana. There's to this day sightings there, which just like the Falk Monster, so. Yeah, let's uh, save that for next week, and I'll get okay, us some yeah. videos, and we'll start there with that. Okay, yeah, and we could do more Urban Legend episodes, too, because there's, like, a million of them. Like, there's so much to talk about. Yeah. Sounds good. We just, we just did, like, the popular ones, and we still need to talk about Logness and stuff, too. I, I mean, I guess we could save that, too, because there's a lot on that. Do you just want to Definitely. do a whole episode de dedicated to Bigfoot? 
Well, not the whole, but we'll start there. Is it going to be like the main part? Because I want to make sure I get all my researches done like this week. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'm thinking, trying to think on top of my head, but I can send you a bunch of stuff to where, oh, oh. like, what's going on nowadays, like the groups who are researching <laughs> it, you know, the BFRO, which is the Bigfoot Researchers Organization, which is currently still taking people's uh, eyewitness testimonies and, you know, like, we can start there. So I think that'd be a good topic to start with. Okay, yeah, that because I, I find it, like, better for me because my attention span so if I have to write stuff down to, like, if I focus on one, like, thing or something, or, you know, maybe a couple, but not, like, like 10 or so, like, I don't know. No. I couldn't do a whole episode on, like, 20 different things. <laughs> so no, maybe, I, I wouldn't go that far, but, no, just... Well, we could focus that... on maybe Bigfoot and the Loch Ness, like, next week. Those are the two things I think we should mainly talk about, and then bring in just creepy little stories, like, you know, in between, or something, you know what I mean? Yeah, any anything we find along the way, because stories yeah. will come up. Yeah, little so. short, like, creepy things, or just... Just bring up like just a, just spooky stuff. Scare yeah, people. It's, it's spooky Saturday, so Yeah, we gotta scare people. But I'm gonna have to uh I'm gonna have to head out for tonight, but um, Okay. Uh, you know, I'll definitely give you a couple things for, for the Bigfoot thing and that and Loch Ness sounds like a good plan to me. Okay, so y'all you y'all heard it first, dude. We're doing Bigfoot and Loch Ness. So that's what next week's episode is going to be about. So you guys better stay tuned. Better come back. All right. I'm going to end the stream, y'all. All right. Good night to everybody. How do I do this? <laughs>